this presentation by is by Anna, who is a display and creative director, director at Incubator UK. And the talk is called Social Amplification, a snapshot into your influencer marketing potential. Over to Anna. Cool, thank you. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna to talk to you today about, about social amplification, which is a technique we've been developing at Incubator for maximizing the, the value of, of influencer campaigns. I think you know, the, the value of influencer is, is well understood, but there's a couple of key questions that, that we really should be asking about our campaigns that maybe it's not that easy to get the answers to. And the answers will vary from campaign to campaign, even influencer to influencer. And the first of those is, well, where is the value actually coming from? Is it from the content or from the audience? Um, of course, it can be both, uh, but typically not actually an equal measure. I think it's important to understand this distinction to get maximum value from the campaign. For instance, if it's the content that really stands out, how else can it be used? If it's the if it's the audience, how do we drive more engagement? How do we find similar audiences? And then secondly, well, is this actually really a brand or a performance campaign? Um, these are often rather erroneously divided, I think, on the basis of, of what is measurable rather than actually the goals of the campaign um, and the response and engagement that we expect from our audience. And you see a lot of influencer campaigns that are considered branding simply because sales impact can't be measured, but actually continue to run with, with highly product-focused performance style messaging. So I think this is something to really get, get clear on as well. And then there's a couple of challenges to, to how we grow uh, influencers as well. Um, so the first of those is scalability. Um, each influencer typically has, has a limited audience, um, and the majority of posts obviously have not a lot of longevity. So within this environment, scale has to come from really multiplying the number of influencers and posts. Um, and while the audiences and influencers are obviously out there, uh, the management is quite resource intensive and it's not actually very easily automated. Uh, and then secondly um, is measurability. I think everyone knows the challenges of measurement on social platforms. And of course, it's a lot worse for, for organic than it is for uh, paid campaigns in terms of you know, restricted insight, third party tracking being limited. Affiliate links and voucher codes can do a bit, but have, have quite big blind spots. And actually treating it as earned media, I don't think works especially well for, for the environment either. So the solution that we've come up with is, is social amplification, which essentially consists of taking influencer content out of the social platforms. So at a basic level, this just means converting the post into formats that can be served across programmatic inventory. Um, so in theory, obviously, you could do this manually, and I'm sure you'll be aware of some of the providers and publishers out there who do offer, offer similar formats uh, with varying degrees of automation. Um, but we actually built our own tool because what we wanted to do is, is go beyond just integrating content to display campaigns. We really needed to be smart in our approach. So to give an example of, of where this might be required, yeah, I think the goal of amplifying influencer content still needs to focus very much on, on elevating that content. So the placement section is really important. So we chose to run campaigns in such a way that we had a contextual layer built in so that the most relevant available post is served on, on any given page of content. Um, I think it's also important to consider the, the target audience and how, how that's segmented to make sure that, that you're picking up on variation according to factors like, like tone of voice in the post, for example. So to come back to those, those two key challenges um, and how, how, how does social amplification help, help address those. Um, on the scalability front, I think the benefits are, are pretty clear. Um, opening up targeting to, to kind of the whole world of display inventory means your reach becomes uh, practically limitless. There are also benefits to doing this rather than boosting within platforms. Um, CPMs are significantly lower. And yes, engagement is lower, but actually the, the benefit is you know, that's offset by the price differential. And you also get a whole new set of data signals to play with in terms of audience targeting, um, placement targeting, and so on. And from a measurement point of view, um, this is where it really comes into its own, because amplifying social content opens the door to all those tools that are typically available for display campaigns and not so much within social environments. So a quick win is, is the availability of view through tracking. So you can understand how potential customers interact with you having seen or engaged content with content previously, and then look at the relationship between conversions, engagements, and views within the amplified environment. And we can then extrapolate that backwards to estimate the actual overall performance impact in, in the native social environments as well. We can then take it a step further to, to look at the role the content plays alongside other media channels and really understand the difference in performance uh, for the same audience of different content to understand what's, what's most effective uh, at post level. So once we've got that measurement in place, we can then come back to those key questions and start providing answers. Obviously, there, there won't be a one size fits all here, but can give a couple of examples of what that might look like. So for example, the retail client we ran this with, uh, what we found there was that a lot of influencers were actually successful because of the high affinity of their audiences with a lot of existing customers in there. So it's actually functioning more through engagement. And this really impacted how, how we um, you know, targeted the campaigns moving forward. And then for, for a client where um, 
they have previously seen the influence of campaigns as very much branding activity. We were able to demonstrate a really strong ROI, a positive ROI for them by looking at, at the, the tracking the, the amplified um, sales and, and matching that back to the native content. And a particularly interesting finding that we had there was actually the strongest ROI wasn't necessarily being driven by the influencers with the greatest post engagement, um, which was insight that we were able to then factor into our recommendations going forward. So just to conclude, I'd highly recommend social amplification as a technique uh, if you're looking to increase the reach of your influencer campaigns to get a more accurate view of the overall performance impact and really you know, understand the core drivers of success. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Thanks so much for the presentation. So we have a couple of minutes for questions. So you must see so much work and get such a, a kind of high level picture of everything that's going on and, and what's really driving performance or driving engagement. But what are the trends that you're seeing? What scares you? What excites you? What's going to happen in the next 12 months that people aren't that sure about, but you're pretty confident is going to be a big thing? I mean, the, the the obvious one, obviously, given given my focus on, on measurement here, is, is everything that's going on in terms of privacy and, and cookies um, and all that kind of thing. And I think, you know, in, in this context, the biggest thing that's going to do is the impact it's going to have on, on putting walls up between platforms. So getting that that overall or view of what's going on is going to become a lot trickier. So you, we need to be able to get smarter looking at how we can use content across across multiple platforms, across multiple um Areas how how we take that that top down view rather than looking at kind of you know, nitty gritty attribution which isn't going to really work anymore. How do we make sure we're valuing the channel success? I think that's going to be the biggest challenge over the next twelve months as we as we prepare for that. And so what um, it, since uh, attribution is going to change, what do you think is going to be the the key metric that uh, brands are going to keep their eyes on now that the, the signals have changed uh, with the the walled gardens that you mentioned? The signals are going to change, but. I think you know, it's just it's going to be a shift from kind of deterministic measurement to probabilistic measurement. So actually, yeah, right, I'm going to have to stop you there. Can you, can you explain those two things just to make it easy easy for me? If, if no one else. <laughs> so you know, currently the way we track is very much user by user. So for instance, in, in the system, we could report every single order ID of a sale that was driven. Whereas what's going to happen is we're going to move away to that to more of a modeling approach. So we can't say this particular sale was driven by this particular activity, but actually, you know, the likes of, of Google and Facebook have, have that, that volume of data to make very accurate predictions. So on a channel by channel level, um, we'll still have we'll still have that insight. Um, it, what's going to be more tricky is getting that view over the top. So coming up with with good looking at kind of uh, media mix modeling approaches, econometric modeling approaches to, to really manage those budgets and distribution uh, at a higher level, I think is going to become more important. Well, thanks for dumbing that down for me, at least. Uh, the mind boggles. What a great presentation. Thank you so much. Yeah.